Hey guys, in this video I'll be comparing Stefan Matala to the most recent versions of top classic physique competitors. You have Ramon Dino, Wesley Vissers, and Chris Bumstead who will almost likely comprise the top three. Some honorable, more likely competitors for Stefan to face would be Urs, Brian, and Terence. However, this comparison should be more interesting. Since many people consider Stefan the French Ramon Dino, I put them side by side while Wesley and Sebum, two structurally similar athletes, are on the right side. How competitive can Stefan be in a top caliber lineup? Let's break down the poses. The front double is a really strong pose for all these competitors and that should make sense considering they all have stellar genetics. From a wow factor standpoint, Sebum and Wesley draw my attention since both have superb structures and some standout attributes. Chris has that incredible waistline and V-taper, bulbous lats, and the best X-frame, while Wesley has the best silhouette, the most deeply separated quads, and immense width. Ramon and Stefan are very similar in the fact that they are very balanced, proportional, and shapely, yet they don't necessarily have an outstanding trait. This is more so directed towards Stefan, since at least Ramon has peakier biceps and larger, more swept quads. Ramon actually isn't much bigger than Stefan when it comes to muscularity, and Stefan actually has the smallest waist up there. That being said, the reality is that Stefan doesn't necessarily have that X factor to his physique in this specific pose, so he'd probably place dead last. The side chest is a great pose for Stefan, and I'd actually have him beating Ramon's 2024 Arnold version. While one could argue that Ramon wasn't at his best, I still believe that Stefan would be thicker in the chest and tricep than even the 2023 Olympia Ramon. Stefan is just genetically prone to fullness, as if his body wants to be bursting full yet is restricted by weight limits. He is definitely beating Ramon in the chest, delt, and probably the side leg minus the hamstring, and overall I prefer his flow. That said, he isn't on the level of Wesley and Sebum, who are similarly dense in the chest, larger in the side leg, and have better delts all around. There really is a significant advantage to being taller in the classic physique division, since not only can you come in heavier, but you can also have a bit more wiggle room. It is crazy that someone like Stefan or Ramon struggle incredibly hard to make the weight, while Wesley and Chris, who look incredible, even have some more weight to play around with. The rear double is a pose which differentiates a first callout competitor from a third or fourth callout guy. This is because most classic physique guys have absolutely beautiful shape from the front and the side. However, back development is something that becomes an afterthought due to the strict weight caps. Although Stefan presents a thick and detailed back, the other three are similar in density while being drier, harder, and wider. Stefan is the closest to Ramon in the back since both present comparable width and density. However, even Ramon has thicker traps, more defined arms, and better glute separation. Wesley absolutely destroys Stefan in the upper body with no real explanation needed, however the two seem comparable in the lower body condition. I probably don't even need to compare Chris since he absolutely smokes Ramon and Wesley in the total package, having the best, most dominant rear double bicep in classic history. In my opinion, Stefan should open up more to accentuate his lat width, and try to find the right balance of fullness and shreds to bring his glutes and hamstrings in with the similar deep separation that he has in the quads. The ab and thigh isn't a great pose for Stefan with him and Wesley being the most similar in that aspect. Both don't have the best midsections ever with Stefan having a genetically weak split in the middle four pack and Wesley having an oddly shaped midsection. They may be ripped and shredded in the serratus and obliques, and they do present impressive quads, however, against guys like Ramon or Sebum, who hit the midsection genetic lottery, there really is no comparison. Chris and Ramon are so streamlined and simultaneously have stellar symmetrical ab development. For the total ab and midsection aesthetics, I'd probably go with Ramon since nobody has those deeply cut, bubbly looking abs, however, structurally, Chris wins by a mile. Additionally, had Chris been hitting a vacuum here, he would take this pose hands down, as his X-frame and V-taper become too much for really anyone to handle. All in all, it seems like Stefan is doing his best, you know, considering the genetic limits that he has, similar to Wesley in that regard. That being said, this genetic weak point could hinder his placings in such a deep competitive lineup like the Olympia. Here's the favorite classic pose, a shot which is a very solid one for all to end off on. 
Stefan and Ramon easily have the most bubbly round muscle bellies in the arms, with Stefan showing more fullness and Ramon having easily recognizable separation. I really like that fullness and the intricate details on Stefan's physique. However, Ramon's shape and flow, especially in the midsection, are probably the best in the pose. Wesley looks imposing and massive, with his extremely large arms, paper-thin skin, and those tremendous details shining through. His quads are probably second to C-bums, with even cleaner separation, but less sweep. While Chris might not have the best arm genetics, he certainly outworked his limits, bringing a very shapely, aesthetic, and dense look to the stage. His midsection is the smallest up there thanks to the slight twist and vacuum. However, I don't think he's the most aesthetic, and that's just my opinion. This one is definitely close, with Stefan and Ramon having that balance, Wesley having the structure and size, and Chris being a masterful poser and a jack-of-all-trades. Stefan really does hold his own up there, however, I don't really see him beating Wesley or Chris, or even Ramon when he's 100% on. Overall, he did hold up nicely, however, most top 10 competitors would also hold their own. I think that that's going to be where Stefan will land this year, somewhere within the 7th to 12th place spot. Let me know in the comments what you thought of this comparison, and if you think Stefan can make it to that first or second callout. If you enjoyed, a like and sub would be much appreciated, and I'll see you on the next one. Thanks for watching.